I think organic lifestyle is the future. I am a better farmer because I go through the process. But it really opens doors because there's a lot of blueberries out there. I'm proud to be certified organic. Preventative practices are the activities and techniques that help farmers avoid crop pest, weed, and disease problems on their farm. The USDA organic regulations require that farmers use a three-tiered approach in dealing with these problems. The first two steps are focused on preventing pests so that the use of an approved input material is not needed. Organic production is not an input substitution um, system. Organic production is based on um, actually proactively preventing pest and disease. Through the organic regulation, certified operations are asked to outline what their preventative practices are, to outline the different steps that they take before they use uh, an allowed input material. Preventative practices are good farming practices. Preventive practices, I think, are the key to successful organic agriculture. The arsenal of tools, of materials that we have available to us as organic growers is limited because we limit ourselves. We choose to use only those elements which are naturally occurring or through science have been shown to not be damaging to the environment. A lot of what I do is try to prevent things from happening, prevent problems. And I think that's key to organic agriculture because it's very, very hard to fix it after it's already a problem. It's much easier to prevent it before it becomes a problem. The first step in managing weed, insect, and disease pests on an organic farm is the prevention of any potential problems by using effective crop rotation and good soil management practices. A compliant organic farming system takes a holistic approach and is designed to prevent pests and disease outbreaks before they occur. So what we have here, this is just a, a small production hoop house that we've uh, established a couple years ago. It's still very young, so we're really focused on building soil in here. Um, right now we have a uh, small onion seed crop that's about to flower, and then on the other half here we're looking at a mixed um, crop, of a cover crop. So grains and legumes kind of in a combination to help build soil organic matter and, and introduce more nitrogen into the soil. The first line of defense also includes use of good sanitation practices so pests and disease are not spread. Cultural practices such as the use of resistant varieties and planting companion plants or trap crops to provide habitat for insect predators are also important practices used by organic farmers. If you're getting started in organic farming and you don't really know what should I do first, oh my gosh, plant a flower garden. Plant a bunch of flowers that are gonna be great habitat for those beneficials and for the pollinators that we need. One of the best things you can do getting started and coming right out of the gate, you'll eliminate or prevent a lot of insect problems if you create a habitat where the beneficials can be right by your side helping you get the job done. The second step of the three-tiered approach is the use of mechanical or physical methods to prevent problems. These practices include the use of row cover to protect crops from pests and the introduction of livestock grazing into the system to remove insects and weeds. Mechanical cultivation, flaming, hand weeding, mulching, or early season transplanting instead of direct seeding may also be used to manage weeds. So here on the organic farm, we do most of um, our field annuals are actually transplants. They're started as starts. And so that's just a way that we get a jump start on the season and also how we really get away from the weed pressures that we would have if we direct seeded more of our crops. The greenhouse here, there's a couple of things going on. Uh, this cover prevents my tomatoes from getting late blight because there is not a chance for them to get rained on, to be able to have the necessary free moisture on their leaves to be taken over by late blight and killed. Uh, this past year, when I planted the seeds for the tomatoes and for the peppers, I also planted Lacey Facilia 
and sweet alyssum seed at the same time. So I had these two beneficial uh, you know, habitat plants coming along at the same time as the peppers. It's been really wonderful to see the aphid population, which I did see starting to build in the peppers when they were at a young age, basically gone by the time we put these peppers in the ground. This is a biodegradable paper mulch that's laid out, and this mulch will last through the season, provide weed control, uh, and then break down so we don't have to pull that back out of the field like we would a black plastic. We use a lot of floating row cover um, primarily for two, two main reasons. Uh, the main one, pest control, and then in the spring and fall, also for a little bit of frost protection. It's kind of like long johns for the, for the crops, for the field. It's a lightweight polypropylene, polyester material. It lets light and water through it. There's different weights of the fabric. In this case, it's, it's on beds of carrots to prevent carrot rust fly from flying over and laying its eggs in the carrots and keeps the, keeps the worms out of the carrots. The final step of the three-tiered approach is the application of approved materials to manage pests and disease. Organic standards allow the use of biological and botanicals to control pests provided preventative practices have first been tried. This step also provides the option for the farmer to use a synthetic material that has been specifically approved as compatible with organic production. Before we spray, before we do any sort of, of action with materials, we have, we've gone through and we've done everything we can by hand, by prevention alone. It's kind of a big thing to deal with and, and you know, we're talking all sorts of diseases, all sorts of pests that can hit a farm, but we're doing our best to build up the soil and build up the health of the entire ecosystem of the farm before we even consider doing a cash crop. Because the use of inputs are the last resort for an organic farmer, the organic regulations outline the importance of monitoring crop pests, weeds, and disease throughout the season in order to limit the use of sprays. I work with an independent pest consultant. He has uh, cotton moth traps uh, throughout the orchard. He has a crew that comes through and, and checks those traps once a week. Uh, he emails me the results of what they find in those traps, and that helps us track where we are in terms of the phenology of the cotton moth, which is, you know, for apples and pears, that's probably the number one concern is cotton moth. In order to be able to attack them at the right stage of their life cycle, you need to know where you are in their life cycle, and that's what the traps help us do. An organic farmer outlines their management practices in an organic system plan. This plan, which details all their practices, including preventative, is updated at least once a year. During the inspection, the inspector will look for signs of preventative practices observable at inspection, such as row spacing or beneficial habitat, as well as review the records of practices that were implemented but no longer observable. So the Organic Certification Agency is regulating your business and regulating um, whether or not you are compliant with the organic standards. But at the same time that we're regulating, we're also there to assist and provide technical assistance. Um, we're here to work with you through that certification process. It's not something that um, we want you to be nervous about. Um, and we want you to fully understand what the requirements are so that you can produce a compliant organic product. That's what we're here for. For more information on organic certification and the requirements for managing crop pests, weeds, and diseases, visit the USDA National Organic Program website.